Hi, everyone. Imagine for a moment that your heart is, your heart is being broken. You're, you're at home, and your, your eyes, and you're, you're sobbing, and your heart is thumping really big. And then you, you go to sleep, and you wake up, and your heart isn't, you know, enthralled, but you're, and you're not crying anymore. So what do you do? What are you left with? You're left with ugh, possibly not feeling um, a sense of control, or maybe you're feeling a little bit of trappedness, or um, just not feeling as connected. But then you move on, and life goes on. Um, so the big question is, how do you get rid of all these feelings, these emotional feelings that kind of trap us and feel us sort of movement? Um, this was a big question for me in 2011. My daughter um, survived leukemia, as well as um, she uh, had a second chance at life at having a bone marrow transplant. And my youngest was five, and a lot of that time was spent with a lot of fam family and friends, um, and they didn't have, you know, I was, I was away at the hospital quite a bit. And so it was time to get, for us to get back to normal. We're at home, and how do you become normal? And there's this moment in time where you just sort of, you're just trying to figure out the things to make everything normal. Well, you start to realize that after a time, you're, my daughters weren't feeling normal. They were still feeling a little sort of emotionally disconnected, maybe a little bit erratic behavior. And, you know, my oldest daughter at the time would, um, every single evening, she would go to sleep. But before she went to sleep, she would beg for shoulder and neck massages, just, just every night. And it was never any sort of way to sort of get her to have some comfort. And um, we took her to naturopathic doctors and um, massage therapists and chiropractors and all these things. And then my youngest was, would randomly start sobbing for 45 minutes that we couldn't console her, just a drop of a hat. And so we didn't know what to do. How do we solve this? How do you, what do you do to figure out how to you know, structure and move on? And then I had a really amazing friend who was a therapist who recommended EMDR. And EMDR is a type of therapy that when civilians you know, try to acclimate back into civilian life, they have to you know, figure out how to deal with life. Well, PTSD happens. And this is sort of, you know, is this part of that hiccup? So we ended up meeting with this woman named Patricia, who was our therapist. And um, what EMDR means is eye movement desensitization reprocessing. It's sort of like REM sleep, but you're awake therapy. It's a type of therapy where your brain is, um, you have a trauma and your brain is then activated to help sort of stimulate the left and the right side of the brain. And it's sort of the cracking of the code. You just, all of a sudden, the safe is open. You're sort of like, you're allowing this memory of this trauma to sort of like move to the places that it needs to be cataloged. And so you feel sort of imprisoned. And when we were, we found our therapist, Patricia, uh, in the very first session, what we found was that Stella's neck and shoulder massages, or sec shoulder, uh, you know, neck sort of, soreness was caused by um, being trapped in the hospital for so long, as well as any time that we mentioned the word cancer, her, her neck would sort of seize up a little bit. And then my youngest, who was, was sobbing for 45 minutes, was caused by the fact that she felt abandoned by me. You know, worst fear. But you end up feeling like you're, you, you have this, this thing that's connected to the abandonment issue, as well as any time that Stella had gotten any attention, she would feel abandoned all over again. We, terrifying. But within that first session, what happens is with the EMDR is that, you know, in this process, it, there's many different types of process. In this one, we actually had sort of a sensor where you hold in your hand, and it pulses back and forth. As you're thinking about your trauma, your brain is then sort of lit up left and right, sort of stimulating that sort of opening in the flower. And your brain then just sort of let, lets that sort of trauma open up. And then it sort of makes sense, even the farthest parts of our memory. And so now Stella and Maya, my, um, the first night after the trauma, um, or the first session, um, she came to me and said my, my neck, and she, went to, she gave me a kiss and a hug after that first session and went to bed. No more begging for massages. And my youngest now can pull it together. She has no problem. These are two really great books called Getting Past Your Past and Walking Away Your Blues. Um, they're amazing books to give you some ideas what that is. Um, we all need a little EMDR in our back pockets for when life throws hiccups at us. 
And you know, we all deserve to be free from our past. Thank you so much.